Hello, I'm JJ Bull, I'm an analyst for Tifo Football and in this video we're going to look at Patson Daka who is Leicester City's new signing. He's a striker, but we're going to look at what kind of striker he is, where he's going to play, what he's going to bring to them, what he does, what does a Daka do? Uh, but first we're going to talk about The Athletic because you should go there and subscribe to The Athletic. It's very good, it's got really good information on Daka there. A uh, lot of the things I know in this video are informed from these sorts of articles. Some of the best writers in the world are there. And if you go to theathletic.com forward slash TIFO IRL, well, boy or girl, you're going to have a world of fun by subscribing with some sort of offer, which I think is 30 days free trial. And then you can subscribe and read all of the football uh, reading. That's what you can do. So let's get into Pats and Daka and look at who he is and why Leicester signed him. So who is Patsandaka? He is a 22-year-old Zambian international centre-forward and Leicester signed him from RB Salzburg, which is in Austria, uh, where he scores a lot of goals. Last season, for example, he scored 27 in 28 games, which gives you an indication of how good he is. He is thought of as like the elite player of last season and he won the Austrian Bundesliga Player of the Year last season. Um, that's maybe not enough just to justify why you'd sign him, because I'm sure lots of players have good seasons. Uh, 30 million euros roughly is what they paid for him. Where does he play? Now, the thing with Daka is that Leicester were looking for a new striker. They had it narrowed down to either Patson Daka or Odson Edward at Celtic, um, who are very different kinds of players. Now, one of the things we've heard about Daka is that uh, if you read like in The Athletic that like we've talked about or listen to any number of podcasts on him, what all of his coaches say is that he is um, desperate to learn, listens to instructions and adapts very quickly. And Brendan Rodgers has said that Daka is going to be uh, probably a sub for the first season, going to basically this is the development year for him. Uh, but when we're looking at how Leicester play and where he'd fit in. So the, the secret to Brendan Rodgers' success is not only he's a very good coach and devises very interesting uh, coaching sessions and knows how to manage players, but also in his team, he just plays the best players. So Leicester started with a 4-2-3-1 under Rodgers, but last season a lot of it was a 3-4-1-2. And uh, we kind of look at like why he does this. It's not because of any particular tactical plan he wants to play. But look, you got to play Suyuncu, Evans and Fofana. If you don't play a back three, one of them misses out. All of them are amazing, especially Fofana. Evans is the captain. Suyuncu is a great player as well, you've got admin. So then you've got Ndidi and Tielemans, your two best players probably in the whole team. Uh, these guys can play as a central two, but you can have Madison in there as well. Madison could play as an eight, but really he's a ten. So if you get a ten in here uh, and you want to have three centre-backs, this is the only way to do it. Three, two, one, like this. Then Vardy obviously has to play. He can play as a one for ages. His scoring kind of slowed down for a little bit last season and Rodgers changed the system because maybe the 4-2-3-1 or 4-3-3 wasn't quite working the way he wanted it to. And that allowed him to bring in Ahinacho as well. And Ahinacho was superb towards the end of last season. Very different player to Vardy. Vardy is a nine, runs off the shoulder of the last man. Uh, his best goal scoring times have been played within uh, this width. I'm going to show you. The width of the 18 yard box. So he, you want him to have basically only to be within this distance, Vardy, because he is most dangerous in these areas. As soon as he starts moving in, in fact, it'll be, we'll give him a bit wider. Definitely no wider than this. But really, you want him within the six yard box. With an 18, he can move into these spaces and he's dangerous, but as soon as you start putting Vardy into these sorts of areas out wide, he's not going to affect play. He can, he can do things, he's a, he can play as a winger if you want to, or an inside forward if you want, but his numbers have shown in the past he needs to be within this sort of... Uh, can I draw him again? Yeah, he needs to be within that sort of range, that's where you want him to be. Now, Ahinacho is less of a 9, he can play as a 9, but he's very much, I call him a 9.5. He can play as a 10, he'll drop. If you call, call Vardy an advanced forward, you'd call Ahinacho a deep lying forward, and that's where he'd go here. Now, in terms of style, Daka is very, very similar to Vardy. So Daka takes very few touches per game, he, maybe a one or two touch finish in the box, um, runs on behind the last man, he's really quick. Uh, that's, that's his real thing, he's lightning fast, he's got great off the ball movement and positional awareness, and uh, that's what he does, makes these sorts of runs in behind. Now, Ahinacho will play more as uh, a deep lying forward who drop into these sorts of spaces behind and will link play. And Odson Edward uh, at Celtic is the one they were linked with as well. He is similar to Ahinacho in that he takes more touches per game, is more involved in link up play, doesn't score as many, uh, but provides more assists. Whereas Daka plays very, makes very few assists. I think it was four assists last season on top of his 27 goals. 
kind of tells you what kind of player he is. He is just a goal scorer, a poacher, an advanced forward. So if Vardy is 34, which he is, and has two years left of his contract, he will stay as the number one striker, or number nine, for Leicester. And Daka will be his uh, replacement, probably long term. That's what the idea will be. Um, but you'll see Daka a lot during the season, because Vardy will need rest. And uh, yeah, we'll see a lot of him. So what we should look at as well with um, Daka is what his play style is and what he will bring to Leicester this season. If we assume that Daka will play as a replacement for Vardy, probably in the 3-4-1-2 that Leicester used a lot last season, um, what we're going to see of him, he's going to play very high on the last line and try and play off the shoulder of, well, of the last man. We'll push Leicester forward as they attack. So the wing backs are very important for Leicester. And you see that we're talking about earlier how they get their best players into the team and keep a certain shape. Most teams who tend to be possession teams or attack, you'll see this very commonly in the Premier League especially, they'll start with a 4-3-3 or a 4-2-3-1, but their attacking shape will end up looking something like a 3-2-5. So if you look, this is my five here, I'm gonna just scribble it so you see it all. This is my five in a weird roundabout way. That's my two, that's my three. 3-2-5, so your shape always transitions. Whenever there's a formation you see someone's written about, it doesn't really matter. It depends where the ball is and who's in possession and how you adapt to it. The numbers don't mean anything. So, with Daka, uh, yeah, he's looking to get in behind for... You want crosses from the, the two wide players. Pereira will be looking to make crosses in. Thomas, if he plays there, will look to make crosses in. We'll give him a bendy cross, because that's the best kind of cross, as we all know. But also... You've got James Madison in behind making these sorts of uh, passes, it's, you know, through balls, a bendy through ball, the best kind of through ball. Yeah, so you get Daka able to make these kind of runs like Vardy would, and uh, Madison able to either thread balls in behind like this, or you know, straight into Daka to control. And we saw Daka came off the bench against QPR in the preseason friendly very recently, and uh, set up a goal first of all by making this kind of run. In fact, I'll get rid of these lines; it's a bit confusing. Daka starts here, makes a run in behind as the ball comes in, and then lays it off for a player to come in and shoot at this near post here. Now this is a bad example, but what a good example is, is the goal that he scored. So when Leicester attack, what you'll see from Daka is he doesn't just play always off the last man on the, on the shoulder of him. What he'll do is uh, start a little deeper. It's all about the timing of the run, this is something he does really well. So Daka will kind of start... Um, like we know, you know he takes very few touches, he's not great in 1v1s, that's something he doesn't do. So things you often hear about Daka is that he's really quick, but he doesn't really take people on. He tends to beat them by timing a run to get beyond them, so the time he's at full speed, they can't possibly catch him. So you do that by starting a bit deeper in the, in the run. So say he's playing as a 9 here, he'll drift out to this sort of half space uh, position here. So as Leicester move forward as a unit, what that then allows is say indeed he moves up here, Telemans is here, I'll swap him around for now. Telemans is here, say. And because Dak is starting here, he'll know that there's going to be a ball coming in from Tielemans and he'll look up, notice that Tielemans has spotted the run and he'll make this sort of out to in run. So by the time he's full speed, this guy can't possibly catch up with the acceleration and then Tielemans just has to dink it into him. This is the kind of thing he does, gets on the end and will score a lot of goals like this. And he'll take one touch to take it down, one touch to finish. He often just finishes it with one touch as well. It's the kind of thing that we're talking about with Vardy. Vardy takes very few touches per game um, makes very few passes per game. He made more assists last season than I think he has in uh, well, most seasons, almost combined. But uh, he takes very few touches of the ball, but affects play. And that's exactly what Dak is going to do. Look on to get on the end of moves, run beyond the last man, but not from this starting position, from the starting position just slightly deeper. And it means, yeah, that he's able to catch defenders out so they can't possibly be able to keep, catch up with him. Uh, and times his run to get in the box to get on the end of moves. You're going to get a lot more creativity from Madison. You're going to get a lot of support from the wingers uh, or wing backs, Thomas and Pereira. Castagna will play as well there, and Albrighton will be, will be there. And I think it's Albrighton actually that made the pass for Daka to score his goal that he scored against QPR. Where Albrighton, where is he? He's now on the pitch. Runs from about here, runs in, and threads that pass through to him to run onto. So we're going to see a lot of him doing these sort of things. Bubakar Samari, we'll, we'll see him play a little bit this season, we'll look a little bit on him just now. Uh, very similar to, in the same way that Daka has been signed as a replacement for Vardy rather than as an additional replacement for Aiki Nacho, Samari is going to be very box to box and a bit more like 
uh, Tielemans. So he's, that's kind of a replacement for here. And he won't start every game this season either. He's more of a sub. Dak is here as well. That's the thing, because Leicester won't always play this 3 4 1 2. They'll often play a one man striker. So they can play Daka here as a central, get Aikinacho off, and you've got more coverage from someone else in midfield, probably Harvey Barnes. Bring him on. So then you're going to have, you need to take one of these guys off. So let's say Fafana is injured and not playing. Evan Sunchu, you got your wing back here, or full back. Pereira is going to be here. 4 2. And then I need one more over on the other side. Let's give him. All right, and can come in. And then Daka fits the same profile as Vardy. Plays central areas, doesn't drop here, means they've always got a focal point in attack and is able to get in behind. He's absolutely lethal in the counter-attack. That's the thing he's absolutely best at. So in transitions, he can be very dangerous. This will be a season of transition where he's learning uh, under Vardy and learning how to play possibly as a central lonely striker. He's played best as a two in the past at Salzburg, but he, um, he can play as a one. He's done it often. And you'll see that his numbers aren't far off what, um, what Haaland was when he left Salzburg to go to Dortmund. It's, it's, uh, yeah. Leicester have a real player here. He's going to be great for them. Probably not this season. You'll see him in bits and, bits and bobs. Uh, his numbers are excellent. He should turn out to be a great signing for them. And for more analysis like that, all during the season, uh, TFO IRL is this channel, and we'd love it if you subscribed. Please think about doing that. Or just do it. It's your choice, really. But yeah, that's that. That's Pats and Daka. Subscribe to the channel. Have a lovely time. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. The Athletic is home to some of the world's best sports journalists, including David Ornstein, Daniel Taylor, Ollie Kay, Amy Lawrence and Rafa Honigstein. There are journalists dedicated to each Premier League team, so every fan gets the coverage they deserve, not just the big clubs. And you can try it for free now for 30 days. See the link in the description.